Welcome to an extraordinary journey into the heartlands of Illinois. Today, the African Eye uncovers the captivating story of Janice Mill, where organic farming and stone ground flour paves the way for a sustainable future. This is not Ashikumu, it's Ashkam, the home of Janice Mill, a place where cultural connections converge to create something truly special. Janice Mill is a family-owned farm that embraces the timeless traditions of organic agriculture. Their journey begins on this very road, leading us on a path to discover the secrets of this remarkable place. Harold Wilken, together with his son Rose and many neighbors, all work on the farm to make a living and to make a difference. I started farming in 1983 uh, at the age of 23. My family has been farming here for four generations and now my son Ross farms with me and he is the fifth generation. Harold's great-grandfather began farming in Illinois in 1882. He had an organic biodiverse farm before anyone called it that. Today we are from Ashkam in the state of Illinois. We bring you a very special story about how corn meal is ground here in the USA. Our farm has consisted of corn and soybeans way back into the 1950s. Um, recently, which I say is 20 years ago, I made the conscious decision to go organic. So now we do a rotation of corn, uh, soybeans, wheat with cover crops, and then back to corn again. Harold and his family are continuing the tradition of growing good food for their community. Corn is a vital part of our farming operation. Uh, our markets consist of um, brewers, and distillers. Um, also, we work with tortilla makers. We work with livestock farms that are organic. And we also work in some new and emerging markets. Here, every seed is sown with care and respect for the environment. Jenny's Mill embraces organic farming practices, ensuring healthy crops that are free from harmful pesticides. We know where the grain comes from, how it's raised, and it goes into a bin where it's kept separately. And we know all the way from the seed to the consumer how that grain was handled. The result? Golden cornfields that thrive under the nurturing hands of dedicated farmers. But what exactly is organic farming? The difference is the practices that we use and the seed that we use. Because we're organic, we use no genetically modified seeds. Our seeds are hand-selected hand um, and improved over years by genetics that were crossed and uh, were done naturally. Uh, because we're organic, we do not use any pesticides, herbicides, or commercial fertilizers. Everything is natural. We use some manures on our corn. We use cover crops. We use rotations. And so our practices mimic nature as it would be on its own. In the embrace of lush fields, and guided by Harold Wilken, Janice Mill flourishes. Harold works tirelessly to cultivate organic corn, celebrating a commitment of sustainable farming practices. Different roots in the field will give the soil different properties that actually benefit the soils. Each stalk stands tall, whispering tales of harmony between man and nature. Janice Mill is renowned for its exceptional quality achieved through the meticulous farming, milling, and storage practices. By raising a clover or a wheat or a rye uh, in between corn and even soybeans, there's a different root structure and it helps to make this, the ground softer 
and uh, mellower and then it also then like the legumes like beans put nitrogen in the soil for the corn so you can actually like feed your next crop with the root systems from the previous crop. Dennis Mill's biggest selling point is the stone milling of the flour, a time-honored method that crushes the grain between two stones, effectively preserving the flavor and nutritional value of the corn flour. This process is similar to what was practiced in Africa many years ago. Some communities still stone crush their corn flour, albeit manually. And this is where we check the flour on this side. And you can definitely see the difference compared to uh, the sifted flour. Now we're seeing a lot of bran. This method conserves the taste, flavor, and nutritional value of the corn flour. The distillers really prefer the white corn for the taste in their whiskey and their vodka. Harold enjoys meeting his customers, especially during harvest time, when memories of his own journey flood back with every interaction. I get to meet some of the people who actually eat this corn. So when Janet and her friends come here to our field and they come out and harvest the, the white corn in the milk dough stage, um, it's really interesting to hear Janet talk about how it's like um, they bring memories from home. And to me that's very important because as I'm harvesting in the fall, I remember my youth and how we picked our corn and how we stored our corn and how as a young person I was involved in getting the corn out of the field and then there was celebrations, people came together and the commodity agriculture has lost all that. So it's really to me very important that Janet and her friends come here to our fields and they can walk among the grain that they're going to eat and they can have a community they can uh, enjoy one another's company, they can laugh and reminisce, and that's part of the food world. We should be enjoying not only eating it, but also having it be a part of our soul. Amidst the abundant cornfields, an unexpected connection blooms. There we go. In the past couple of years, we've had the opportunity to work with Janet who has been working with the Kenyan community to harvest corn at different stages here on our farm to uh, make ugali. Janet Zintambila, an African immigrant whose persuasive nature led Harold to continue growing white corn even when he had contemplated giving it up. So I was talking to Tara. Tara had just shared some mail from Jenny's mail and I, I, it got my curiosity. Where did you get this from? It tastes just like the flour we have at home. So sh uh, she informed me of Jenny's mail and Herod. And at that time, I asked, I remember asking the sister, could I talk to Jill? And she gave me Jill's phone number. So I called Jill and I said, Jill, you have just what I've been looking for for years. I really want to come and buy some of this flour. And she at that time said, oh, it's some available, but uh, unfortunately we may be facing out the white corn meal. We are not getting so many customers. And I said, please don't, don't do that. We have customers and uh, I'd like to talk to Herod so we see how we can work together. Here at Janie's Mill, one priority of ours is to make sure that we connect with our community that uses our product. Um, so everything from the wheat and the rye and the corn and everything that we produce here at the mill, we want to know how people are using it back in their home kitchens. One such encounter during harvest season brought a meeting of cultures between Janet and Teram Evans, the marketing and relationship manager at Jenny's Mill. 
I met Janet uh, when she was out in the field um, harvesting some of the white corn and it was such a joy to be out in the cornfield with Janet. I felt like she was skipping through the rows and just having a great time. Teram vividly recalled Janet's infectious excitement as she embraced the farm experience. Janet graciously taught Tedam the art of preparing gideri, a dish that bridged a gap between their worlds. And then she went on and she was sharing stories about giteri um, and how she makes it and how her mother made it and how sometimes there's competitions of who has the best dish. Um, and so I was inspired by Janet and I tried to make it myself. And her sharing her, her experiences, right? Um, her cultural background um, was just inspiring, right? And, and so knowledgeable to me. And her energy is, her enthusiastic energy is contagious, right? And so um, I'm so glad that Janet is a part of our community here at Janie's Mill. The introduction of these Kenyan delicacies celebrates diversity and the shared passion for the wholesome ingredients. So the um, white maize flour, we make ugali. Uh, the green one, we roast it, boil it. We even make githeri. Githeri is such a delicious, complete meal that our community love. And even I'm getting it out there to the American community and all my friends who have tasted githeri dearly love it. You can also make porridge, especially for children. And uh, the fiber is so good for all of us. Teram shares her experience preparing gideri. I boiled the corn first, um, and then I cut the corn off the cob, and then I sauteed onions and carrots and put the corn in and some beans that I had soaked and also boiled um, with some spices. Janet knew that the flour produced in Janice meal was unparalleled in flavor and authenticity. We were able to share how um, the Kenyan community would benefit from the green young maize as well as the corn flour. And so at that time I remember giving him, was it five? Three five gallon buckets, corn seed. And I said, plant and let me know when it's ready. I'll be happy to come and harvest. And surely he called me and said, come check it at the milk stage. So when I came and checked, it was just ready. It is reminiscent of the meals she cherished from her African homeland. She shared her knowledge and connected Harold with the African community where the demand for the white corn flour is high. And all it took was getting the word out that we have white maize ready that you can purchase from uh, Jenny's mill. And the word just got out there and it's amazing how quickly you can tell the Kenyan or the African community or even the um, people from the other countries who don't have access in the stores for the white corn when they hear about it they really want to go and buy some so it's been an interesting journey the last three years uh, providing people with especially organic white maize that they can't find in the stores and just reminds them of home when when they eat it it's all about the flavor the community and just getting together and having a good time as a people. She has become Harold's inspiration, reminding him of the significance of his work and the impact it has on people's lives. This is what you've been waiting for. <laughs> you know how long that? You see, pretty much I love this kind of corn mm. because it's not soft. Mm. The one they have in the store is so soft and so sweet. This is more like a home what corn, home? Home. what we eat at home. So that's yeah. why I love it. Okay. Yeah. I've been hungry for it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. During our visit, Janet graciously shared a traditional Kenyan meal with Harold and his employees, a feast that connected hearts through both taste and heritage. You have the opportunity to maintain a healthy lifestyle as well. Should you wish to place an order for delicious and nutritious corn flour, reach out to Janet Zintambila 
via text or WhatsApp using the provided contact numbers. Rest assured, Janice Mill is able to deliver your order to any address within the USA and even beyond. As we journeyed through the farm, Harold revealed the depth of his personal connection to the land. He pointed to a solemn spot where tragedy struck his family many years ago. When I was 11 years old, my uncle was harvesting on that farm and he had a heart attack oh. and died that year oh. from the heart attack. Oh dear. So that was in the middle of harvest. Mm -hmm. Their shared history fuels Harold's dedication to maintaining sustainable practices like crop rotation, ensuring the land flourishes while honoring their ancestral roots. The rotation breaks up the pest cycle. So like um, insects, um, when you don't use rotation, the insects will build up and they build resistance like in the conventional world, they build resistance to the insecticide or the pesticide that the farmer uses because they, uh, well, they just uh, get used to that uh, pesticide and then, like I said, they build up resistance. Deep within the facility, Jill Brockman Cummings, the mill manager, guides us through the ancient art of stone grinding of flour. Stone ground just means the milling process is is done by the crushing of the grains between two stones. So stone milling meaning that the grain is fed through the stationary stone and the rotating stone is grinding it um, into a whole grain product which is definitely more nutritious and and tastes even better than something where parts of the milling process um, or parts of the grain are removed during the milling process. The traditional millstones harnessed with care and precision transform the organic corn into a remarkable flower. Yes, yeah. so she, she's talking about something very interesting about uh, the test. Yes. Because I think the test you get here is the same test that we used to get. We used to get back home, exactly. The test, what test? Test, T-A-S-T-E. Oh, out taste. of the flower. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so, so this somehow that stone milling process, whether it's hand done the old way that your grandmothers did it, mm -hmm. or if it's more modern with our automated stones, you still get that same flavor. Change the flavor. That's interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the nutri nutrients. Nutrients as well. Yeah, you don't lose all that. And the freshness. I mean, yes. your grandmothers were milling that right then and there, and probably then going to cook with it soon right after, away. right away. Yeah. So yeah. that's one of the things that we try to do is to mill fresh, as fresh as possible, right. um, and then get that to our customers because there is definitely a taste difference and we always say along with that taste difference is that nutrition is in there. Mm. Jill warmly invites customers to experience the magic firsthand encouraging them to explore online purchases for nationwide delivery. So we recommend that all of the products that are milled are stored in a cold environment. We encourage everyone to either store it in the refrigerator or even better in the freezer mm -hmm. because so that does a couple of things. So it preserves the freshness and the nutrition. So again, like if you're, you mill it today and you buy it tomorrow, then stick it in the freezer and that will then retain the same nutritional quality that it had um, when it was milled. Just like Harold, Janet's connection to corn goes beyond culinary delights. It brings back cherished memories of walking through the African cornfields. In the embrace of Janet's meal, she is transported back to her roots, releasing the familiarity of the crops that once nurtured her. We go back to our grandmother's generation. Yeah. There was a, a big stone and there was a, a little dip Mm -hmm. and you had another stone so you would put your grain right there and grind it and grind it mm -hmm. so several times you would bring that flour back and grind it until it was finally how long would that take oh my <laughs> i mean it seems like it'd be very physical yes it's a lot of i, I don't know how long but i all i remember my mom had one and shortly after that they disappeared the corn holds the power to evoke feelings of belonging capturing the essence of shared humanity. Our journey takes us through the cornfields 
where neighboring farmers celebrate their own bountiful harvest. As you can see all around me, this is just farmland. This area has already been harvested. When I went organic though, the community thought I lost my mind. Oh. And they were not very supportive for the first few years. Mm. Uh, but then they saw that it worked. Yes. And that I was okay and yeah. that it was going to be good. And now uh, they respect us and they um, and they ask questions and we've even had a couple say that they would love to be organic but they don't want to work that hard. At Jenny's Mill, we witnessed the intricate milling process unveiling the passion and craftsmanship that brings their stone ground flower to life. And this is what you call the ugali. Ugali, yes. Yes, ugali, that's it. Oh, there's a cornmeal. <laughs> That I did know. We conclude this unforgettable experience by breaking bread, sharing a Kenyan meal with Harold's employees, a testament to the bonds formed through shared meals and cultural exchange. As we bid farewell to Jenny's meal, a tapestry of flavors and connections weave together, reminding us of the power of sustainable farming, ancestral ties, and culinary treasures. Join us next time when we shall be on Janet's farm, exploring the more enriching journey into the world of sustainable agriculture. Thank you for watching this edition of the African Eye. From Eshkam in the state of Illinois, my name is Bonventure and this is the African Eye. And by the way, if you like my story, please like, share, comment and subscribe to this channel because I want our people to eat healthy.